The fall season is underway. Highlights next on High School Sports Scene. Hi and welcome to High School Sports Scene. I'm Capri Gaines. Week four of the football season saw a division matchup between two of Baltimore County's top ranked teams in the 3A, 4A division. Two of the top football teams in Baltimore County met at Clarence McWilliams Field as the Franklin Indians hosted the Catonsville Comets. Franklin appeared to be in control, taking a 21-7 lead four minutes into the second quarter, but Catonsville was not about to panic. While their running game got into gear, it was a pass from Jordan Sprankle to Joseph Hilton that pulled the Comets to within a touchdown at 21-14. Late in the first half, Franklin driving as Jackson Thornton connects with Marquise Ellis. A great second effort by Maurice McFadden picks up yards. But Thornton's pass over the middle is intercepted by DeAndre Lane to kill the Indians' drive. Franklin got the ball to start the third quarter. Thornton hit Steven Smothers on a slant. Then a quick screen to Marquise Ellis, and Ellis takes it inside the 10. Pass to Jordan Adams takes it to the two. And Maurice McFadden takes it in for the touchdown. Point after is good. Franklin up 28-14. Later in the third, with the Comets driving, Julian Singletary up the middle. Then DeAndre Lane takes it 25 yards to the house. Point after is good, Franklin up by seven. The Comets go with a squib kick on the kickoff and Steven Smothers takes it deep into Comet territory. Jackson Thornton hits Marquise Ellis in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. Point after was good. Franklin 35, Comets 21. In the fourth quarter, Catonsville drove behind Julian Singletary with DeAndre Lane taking it in for the score. Point after was good. Franklin up 35-28. After getting the ball back with Jackson Thornton in the shotgun, the snap goes through his hands, and in the scramble, the ball rolls out of the end zone, resulting in a safety, making it 35-30 Franklin. Catonsville got the ball back, and Sprankle hits DeAndre Lane on the sideline. But on fourth down, Sprankle tries to hit Lane again, but the pass is just out of reach. The Comets last chance came as time wound down. Joseph Hilton fields a punt deep in Comet territory and takes it out over midfield before he is brought down at the Franklin 45. Final score, Franklin takes a 35-30 win. On the soccer field, Eastern Tech's girls traveled to Catonsville in a matchup between two local teams ranked in the top 15. Let's head to the field with girls soccer as the Eastern Tech Mavericks visited the sixth ranked Catonsville Comets. Defense was the name of the game as both teams battled back and forth during the match. Eastern Tech though was up for the challenge. 
The Mavericks had an opportunity to score when Allison Greenstein kicked a nice corner shot, but it's blocked by goalie Natalie Kroon. The ball bounces around and Allison had another try, but is blocked, and the Comets defense would not allow the Mavericks to score. The Mavericks were back at it again when Mitty Brandy Bryant got off a shot that went just wide of the right post. Right before the half ended, Allison Dingle stumbles but is able to keep her balance and makes a nice pass to striker Jennifer Nome, who takes a shot, but it's right at the goalie, Ryan Jones, for the save. With zeros on the board at halftime, the fans were looking for a score in the second half. The Comets came out first with a lofting crossing pass by Jennifer Nome, but goalie Ryan Jones was there again to deny any opportunity for a score. The Mavericks got a break when Kerry Klimko steals the ball away from Katie Weitz and kicks a nice crossing shot to Brandy Bryant, who splits two defenders and the goalie and hits the ball off the post for the first score of the game. With four minutes left in the game, Nicole Juan boots a nice pass up the field, where striker Claudia Flister hustles for the ball and tries to get off a shot. But Ryan Jones was there once again for another nice save. It was a hard-fought game for both teams, but the Mavericks were just a little too much for the number six Comets today as they went down in defeat, 1-0. The same day, Catonsville's boys met Eastern Tech on the Mavericks soccer field. Two teams vying for the top spot in Division I of the county's boys' soccer standings met at Eastern Tech as the Mavericks played host to Catonsville. The Mavericks' forwards applied pressure early, but were not able to capitalize. Kirk Daisley put this shot high. Later, a long throw by Cody Gwynn puts the ball in point-blank range, but Logan Miller's shot is saved by Comet goalie Kevin Shepard. And Trevor Hagee's crossing pass slides past the goal mouth. Meanwhile, the Comets were having trouble putting together a strong attack. Finally, with less than two minutes to go in the half, Catonsville's Emmanuel Amere turns on a loose ball and drives it into the top corner to put the Comets up 1-0. As in the first half, Tech came out at the start of the second half applying pressure. Trevor Hagee fights through the Comet defense to get off a shot that is stopped by Shepard. Moments later, Dominic Santoro hammers a shot, but again, Shepard is there for the save. And Trevor Hagee's chip sails just high. Off a Tech throw-in, Amire gathers the ball and outraces the Tech defense, taking it end-to-end -end and finishing to put the Comets up 2-0. Despite a spirited effort, the Mavericks were not able to get on the scoreboard as the Comets took a 2-0 victory. Now let's meet this month's outstanding male student athlete. Here's Janie Brown with the story. Shane Gaines is a senior quarterback for Owings Mills High School. Despite his current love of sports, he didn't immediately warm up to the idea. I first got involved playing sports when I was about 11, and my mom just was tired of me, like just being around the house doing nothing, so she just took me to the field one day and put me into sports. I mean, I really didn't like it, but after the first couple of days, I started to like it. Having played running back in rec football, Shane was moved to quarterback when trying out for the high school team. We had a quarterback on JV, but it was like, I was in, we were in warm-ups. I was throwing the ball around, 
And the JV coaches, hey, let's see if we put you at quarterback because of the offense we had wasn't really like throwing and really athletic. So they just changed the whole offense, made me to a passer, and from that day on, I just became a quarterback in high school. We, we saw with his natural footwork and then the JV head coach at the time, Coach Vales, you know, tried him out in some QB drills and liked what he saw and he kind of just developed from there. I felt like he just, it was a place in his heart where he just stepped up to do everything he could, even if it, if it, if it killed him. Like he just stepped up, that's how much he loved to win, that's how much he loved to play. He would do anything. So I just took, I think he took that leadership role and took one for the team. Stepping up to be quarterback was no easy feat, but Shane's work ethic and dedication allowed him to succeed. I think he stepped up in, in his work ethic. Like, he has worked so hard. Like, I, I, I don't think you can even imagine. He's done so much for the school. Uh, usually he's one of our first stunning drills, uh, you know, sprints and all, he pushes himself usually the hardest. Uh, he is a motivator, he does ye yell at the guys to get him motivated, um, does lead through example, um, tries to push his teammates. While making a name for himself as a quarterback, Shane actually prefers his other role as a defensive back. Honestly, I like playing defense more because I can get aggressive and, you know, it's you can, talk, you can really talk more on defense and get into people's head more than you can on offense because you can't be like overly aggressive on offense. But on defense, you can get real aggressive and get in somebody's face. Shane's work ethic applies not only to his work on the field, but to his schoolwork as well. Shane as a student is a hard worker. Um, as he came in, he didn't have great grades. He's one of those kids that works to improve his grades throughout his high school career. He's currently like a B student. Um, it's one of the things that he kind of identified with. And actually, uh, Coach Bales' uh, coach helped him kind of learn how to study. Um, so it's been something that he's uh, worked on since he's been here. So I know like homework comes first after practice and if I don't have my homework done, I, I do that before I go to practice and just make sure that's done before I come football because football is going to be there, things like that. Shane has made a lasting impact on the Eagles football program. You know, when I took over, the program was 0-50. Um, his first year, he was down on JV, but they went 6-2 and, and I think that was a big step because even, even previous with the JV squads, they had only won a, a game the, the year before, and years before that they were winless. So I think that helped build confidence in the whole group. On the football aspect and on the academic aspect, just look at me with someone who, you know, started down and picked herself back up and now on a good track. So just look at me for the good things I've done and put the past bad things we've done and I've done personally behind me. Just look at me as a dedicated and ambitious person. For High School Sports Scene, this is Janie Brown. Congratulations to Shane. To honor his selection as this month's Outstanding Male Student Athlete, he will receive an award from All Graham Incorporated in Timonium. Coming up next is Randy Dace with Coach's Corner. We'll be back in two weeks with another edition of High School Sports Scene. Until then, I'm Capri Games. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Randy Dace and welcome to Coach's Corner. My guests today are Michael Sy, the Acting Coordinator of Athletics in the Baltimore County Public School System, and our old Acting <laughs> Coordinator of Athletics in the Baltimore County Public School System, Mr. Ron Belenko. And Ron uh, and Michael, welcome to high school sports scene. I apologize for saying old, Ron, but <laughs> how long have you been around in the Baltimore County Public School System, Ron? Uh, 46 years, Randy, so and you could say that. That's <laughs> outstanding. And Michael, it's great you are a Baltimore County graduate mm -hmm. from Woodlawn High School. Mm -hmm. And when you were there, you were an athlete, student athlete. Tell us the sport you participate in. Well, I'm a product of Baltimore County Public Schools, graduated from Woodlawn High School. I uh, played football there and track standout and enjoyed my career there and went on to the University of Delaware. And then came back and has been involved in the school system since. And I guess as of January, you became the acting coordinator of athletics. How's it been going so far, Michael? Uh, it's been a whirlwind. Uh, <laughs> it's been extremely busy. It's been exciting. Um, very, very blessed to have Ron here with me, helping me, walk me through. Uh, but I work with a 
bunch of great guys, 24 great athletic directors. They all have been very supportive and, and been right there with me, helping me to, to get through this process as we move on through this transition. Now, Ron, you've been an acting consultant for the last year in the athletic department. And uh, when Michael came along, uh, real excited about seeing him come a homebred uh, student athlete from Baltimore County. Right. There isn't any question, Randy. We had, when Mike uh, was, was named, finally moved in the office, you have a product of the county, as you just heard Mike say, from Woodlawn High School. Uh, it doesn't take that long when you're a product of it to know the system, know the folks in here, and someone coming from the outside with that transition would be tremendously hard and Mike has made that transition because of, of his ability, uh, the reputation he earned as an athletic director at Woodlawn. Now Ron, as of June 14th, 15th, it's all over for you, retirement? Retirement, officially retired. Mm -hmm. June uh, 15th will be my last day uh, as far as with Baltimore County Public Schools and everyone asked me, what are you going to do? First time we could go down to the beach and then decide at the end of the summer uh, <laughs> might do work with the NIAAA a little bit and with the State Athletic Directors Association, but, but that's it. So Michael, as we were joking before the taping, the training wheels will be take, coming off and you're going to be riding by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, anything first on your agenda list? Well, I don't know if anything's first on the agenda. Um, the training wheels, I think I've been off for about a, a last past month. Okay. Ron has been turning everything over to me and it's like, here you go. So uh, I'm kind of taking it one step at a time, um, learning as I'm going and just getting used to the process, getting used to the, the different things that Baltimore County expects and, and just trying to live up to the standard that Ron has set. And you've been a coach at Woodlawn and you've also been the athletic director at Woodlawn. Uh, looking back, and I know you're in a completely different role now, but as a coach, you know, teacher, participant, what's, what's great about Baltimore County's athletic program that you always thought that you were great, greatly proud of? Well, I think the thing that, that I'm most proud of is just that the, the amount of love and support that you get from the teachers, the administrators, the staff. And I think what Baltimore County really does that maybe – we can't say for every single school system that they raise they raise young men and young women to be student athletes, and and that's the thing that I took most, I was most proud of coming through because they made sure that I had an opportunity. They presented opportunities for me. They made sure the academics was there. They made sure the athletics was there. They 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 took an interest in me as a whole person, and I think that's what Baltimore County does so well. It's ironic, uh, Ron, but the number of uh, coaches I have on throughout the year. And I say, oh, another graduate of a Baltimore County High School. I know myself, I'm a graduate of Towson High School. I came back because of the role models that I had in the classroom and as coaches. And as you said, Mike, they, it's a great system. And mm -hmm. when you have people come back and want to do the same thing, you know something's going right. You know, Ron, I first ran into you in 1977 at Overly High School. Um, I was a student teacher. And as a great example, Ron was a phys ed teacher at Overly yeah. High mm -hmm. School. And uh, you were going to start coaching a pretty new sport over there, right, for Overly? Yep, that was the lacrosse program. And I'll never forget you offered me that opportunity mm -hmm. to work with you, and it didn't work out that way, but the opportunity was great. And, uh, Ron, you, you've been from the trenches to the, to the top dog. Mm -hmm. Looking back, talk to us a little about your career. Uh, when you talk about the career, you mentioned at Overly High School starting a new sport there at the time in, in lacrosse, along Len Boston, who's over there at Towson with you. Know, he was uh, the mover behind it. And when you take a look at when I first started Baltimore County, Randy, we didn't have football. So you saw football grow, you saw the sport of lacrosse grow, the wrestling program, and you just saw the county grow uh, tremendously since I've been around. We, we made a cultural change in the early 90s in athletics by putting up some lighted fields, playing at night, uh, playing uh, football particularly on Friday night or Saturday afternoons without lights. So when you take a look at that potential and the students, uh, our offerings have grown. We added girls sports, we added girls golf over the years, girls track and field, girls soccer. So being part of that and coming up through the trenches. And that's similar to what Mike has done. He came up, has come up through the trenches and you know every phase of it. Someone can't come up to you and say, well, you haven't done this. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. Trouble is when you're around as long as I have, <laughs> it's what can you do for me lately and all these things been in place and people like yourself do remember some of those things. And another thing, I don't think a lot of people realize, Ron, but besides being the coordinator of athletics mm -hmm. in Baltimore County, you served on so many different committees and I know one of the, you know, your special sport to you that you had great love for lacrosse, yeah. wrestling, 
uh, mm -hmm. football, and people don't realize all that additional time that you're putting in. Well, in order to make an impact on a state level, it's part of our responsibilities to be active on a state level and serve on, on MPSSA committees. And if you're not active, the county or the LEA gets shortchanged. So you must be very active uh, in order to look out for Baltimore County and, and make your presence known. Ron, let me ask you, the first day that Mike came in, Michael came into your office and you sat down and you mm -hmm. talked about things, what was your first words of advice to Michael? First words of advice? <laughs> gave him a lot of words of advice. Yeah. I might be remember that. But uh, one thing is that uh, advise Mike to do is be visible, be highly visible, be out there, let folks see you. Uh, it, it's going to be a tough job because there are a lot of things that have to take place in the office. Principals are expecting you in the morning, but you can't. You cannot operate by email and texting, you have to make that personal contact to be out there to see what's going on. You know, when you coach Randy, if I were on the side, you know, on the sidelines watching what happens, if there's a bad call to officials, you would come running over right away and say, Ron, where did the officials come from? But you have to be out there to know that you listen and care and support things when, when they, they, they go bad or when they're going well. Now, Ron, that was a setup question because I knew <laughs> the answer. And Michael, the reason I asked him that was because if he didn't tell you that, I was going to tell him that today. Right. But to be seen, because I will, I've always seen Ron in the gym, mm -hmm. on the field, on the track, and that visibility I think has been very important as a coach and also from the parents and, and also from the teachers. Mm -hmm. Michael, you think you're going to be out in those fields? Well, I, I've been out in the fields already. Um, like Ron said, that was the first thing he told me is to be visible. Um, the second thing he told me was to be visible, and the third thing he told me was to be visible. <laughs> so for, He's for a me, realtor like location, yeah, right? So for me, it was easy, you know, just to go out and be myself, get to know all the coaches. You know, um, at Woodlawn High School, I worked with a staff of about 40, 50, and then we worked with the entire county and 24 ADs and hundreds of coaches. So I want to get to know each and every one of them, get to know what they bring to the table as far as Baltimore County athletics is concerned. And in that way, I'll have a good, I'll have my finger on the pulse of Baltimore County Athletics and, and like Ron has done for so many years, he knows everybody. I mean, it's, it's amazing how many times we go out and somebody say, hey, Ron, and he, gives, he calls them back by their name. Right. So if I can ever get to that point where I, I know all of my staff, all 24 schools, the middle schools included, then I think that I'm on the right track. We come up this fall, summer will be like this, right? And something's new this year, Michael. It's called August 11th is the first day of fall mm. tryouts. <laughs> And that's the earliest date we've ever had. Have you had any emails or complaints yet about that one? Or uh, does everybody just sort of say, that's the way it is, let's move on? Well, no complaints yet. Um, we have some things coming down the pipeline that might get some complaints going. Um, <laughs> but no complaints yet. I think everybody is just excited to get the new year started. Um, I'm excited um, being new leadership coming in. Um, it's going to be, it's gonna be um, a short summer. It's already short for me as I, as the training wheels are taking off. So um, we're, we're really excited. Well, no complaints as of yet, but you know, we can't make everybody happy. So. Well, Gemma, we're just about out of time, but Michael, I would give you one suggestion. You might want to get a name tag so your family knows who you are when you come home. Because <laughs> <Okay. right? laughs> Ron name always had a name already. tag. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> but listen, Michael, good luck. Thank you so much. Uh, I think we've got a great man for the job. I'm looking forward to working with you as all the other coaches and parents and athletes of Baltimore County. Ron, what else can we say? Uh, you dedicated basically your life to the school system in Baltimore County and did one super job. And uh, we'll miss you, but I think we'll probably still see you in a field or a gym somewhere because I know you still got that in your blood. But enjoy your retirement and uh, wish you good, good, good health all set. Thank you, Randy. For High School Sports Scene, I'm Randy Dace. Thanks for watching. See you next time.